Well, the madness has begun. Now only 56 teams, Billy, have a dream of making it to the Final Four. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, along with Billy Packer, and welcome to our CBS Sports continuing coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Tournament. The madness continues tonight from coast to coast. Coming up in just a few moments, we'll be going down to Greensboro, where Duke University will open its defense of the national championship against another Carolina school, the Fighting Camels of Campbell, team led by Mark Mucknick, who was the MVP of the Big South Tournament. Of course, the Blue Devils are paced by Christian Leitner, a leading candidate for Player of the Year honors in college basketball. Now, when this game is over, we'll get you out to the finish of Brigham Young and Louisiana State and Boise, and we'll be sampling some of the other games in action. Houston and Georgia Tech, as well as Mississippi Valley State against Ohio State. Then approximately 10 Eastern time, our second games will start kicking in. Eastern Illinois against Indiana, Yukon and Nebraska, Northeast Louisiana and Southern Cal, and Iowa taking on Texas in the 8-9 game in the East. But how do you see Duke and Campbell here, Billy? Jim, Campbell has never played in an NCAA tournament before. They have no seniors. They've won 12 out of the last 14 games. That ought to help them on a roll a little bit. But they're facing a team coached by a man who's now 27-7 and in NCAA tournament play. A tough task, and we've never had a number 16 beat a number one. So it's a tough task for them tonight. Mm, I'm telling you. The folks down at Bowie's Creek, though, are rather fired up. Billy, they sent us a, a little hey, hat. I've, I've spent a lot of time down there at the Campbell College Camp, one of the oldest and biggest basketball camps in the world. John Wooden, in fact, helped start that camp at Campbell, and Bobby Hurley and Christian Leitner have worked that camp as well in the summer, but it's Duke and Campbell coming up shortly. Now, we want to get you up to date on a couple of scores that finished late in the afternoon. One of them was in Greensboro. Took a long time, though. Three power outages, three hours and eight minutes before Missouri claimed victory, 89-78. to 78. A West Virginia led 38-34 when the first outage occurred. Severe weather in the Greensboro area. Apparently lightning hit the transformer there. And then Anthony Peeler, he struck lightning, Billy. Well, this was a severe problem for West Virginia, as Anthony Peeler has been throughout his career for Missouri. 25 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists today. You can see the players. I mean, they were on a yo-yo all day in the locker room, back out again. Here's Peeler. It didn't make any difference what they did with the uh, power outage. He was ready to play today. Time-wise, the longest game uh, ever played at the Greensboro Coliseum, even surpassing that game in the tournament back in 1974, North Carolina State and UCLA in the Final Four. One of the greatest college games of all time, and it broke that great streak by UCLA and Bill Walton. That was a double overtime game back then, and North Carolina State went on to the national championship in that building. Here's another ACC team, Florida State, carrying the banner for the first time, winning today by 10 out west. The Seminoles are the three seed in the west. Pat Kennedy's team, well, it was a bit uh, of a bittersweet victory. Here's a, one of the high moments. Dobard on the slam off the alley-oop pass from Charlie Ward, but Ward Billy was sitting down with a separated or dislocated shoulder, and we don't know until tomorrow, in fact, if he'll be able to play over the weekend. Could really hurt this club because he sets the defensive intensity for the team, and he's a great leader in the backcourt. Florida State now will advance and play Georgetown on Saturday. Billy and I will be with you throughout the evening, but right now we start you out with Campbell and Duke. Mel Proctor and Dan Bonner will have the call for you when the road to the Final Four continues right here on CBS. Enjoy the game. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Reebok, who asks, who is the world's greatest athlete, Dan or Dave? Digital Equipment Corporation. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a light. Why can't van doors swing open instead of slide? Why do minivans handle like trucks? Why can't they feel more like a car? This is what the engineers at Mazda wondered when they designed the MPV. Because when you ask better questions, you tend to come up with better answers. Why does your door do that? The MPV from the new Mazda. It just feels right. Not on MTV. Not on VH1. Nowhere else except on CBS will you see Hammer from the heart. See the world television debut of Hammer's new video. Get a first peek at the concert tour of the year. And an exclusive backstage look at Hammer's recent world tour. It's Hammer from the heart, April 3rd. 
Take a look every night at the issues that affect you every day. Eye on America, only on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. continues from the East Region in Greensboro, North Carolina as the defending NCAA champion Duke Blue Devils meet the Fighting Camels of Campbell University. In action earlier today at the Greensboro Coliseum, Seton Hall came from behind to beat LaSalle 78-76. Missouri outlasted West Virginia in a game that took over three hours to complete due to three power outages. Hello again, I'm Bill Proctor with Dan Bonner here in Greensboro. It's been a long day with that three-hour game between Missouri and West Virginia, but we're still here and still going great. So is Duke coming into this game as a top-ranked team in the tournament. Certainly no strangers to the tournament. Four straight appearances in the Final Four and five of the last six years. Obviously a tremendous NCAA tournament record for the Duke Blue Devils. All these guys who are out here today have been there before, and so Duke really... A big favor, and in contrast to the Duke Blue Devils, as we see here, Campbell University, one of four teams making their first appearance in this year's NCAA tournament. And Dan, Duke obviously an overwhelming favorite to win the game. To put things in perspective, Duke has eight players taller than the tallest starter for Campbell. Joe Spinks, the leading rebounder on this team, has his hands full tonight. Joe Spinks is generally considered to be the most athletic of the Fighting Campbells, and as their second leading scorer, he's going to need to use all those athletic skills tonight. Duke has had some injury problems. Both Grant Hill and Bobby Hurley have been hurt this year. Both are back, and Hurley is the guy who makes the Duke attack go. Bobby Hurley, many people, I think including Coach Mike Krzyzewski, would tell you that he's the heart of this Duke team. When he's in and he's playing well, these Duke Blue Devils can really be awesome. All right, Dan, let's check in with Leslie Visser. Now, how charming is the story of Campbell University? Coach Lee had never signed an autograph before he came here. He said he and his staff took more than 900 phone calls the past couple days, and their goal, he said, is to hang around like a loose tooth. Kind of like you guys, Mel. <laughs> Campbell mania running rampant in Bowie's Creek. And let's take a look at the starting lineups. Tony Lang still in the lineup. Grant Hill will be coming off the bench for Duke. Mocknick and Spinks, the two guys to watch. For Campbell and has to be quite a thrill for the Fighting Campbells making their first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. The officials Dave Bear from Lexington, Kentucky, Phil Bova from Westlake, Ohio, and Jim Askew from Atlanta, Georgia. The poster boy, Christian Leitner, the, the rock idol. About 5,000 people turned out here yesterday to watch Duke practice and they respond to these guys like they're teen idols, don't they? Many of the people up at the Duke practice yesterday squealing young girls, <laughs> squealing with every appearance by Christian Leitner. It'll be Leitner against Joe Spinks. The Blue Devils against the Fighting Camels. The Fighting Camels fighting for position around the jump circle. This is Thomas Hill in the backcourt. Bobby Hurley. Brian Davis. Go right inside of the big man, Leitner, surrounded by Camels. Thomas Hill puts up a three. It's really going to be a tough chore for Campbell. Duke has so many weapons. There's Bobby Hurley running into Billy Ellison, who is not a small man. So ran him into a blind pick. Steve Martin starts in the backcourt along with Keith Eisen, Joe Spinks, Mark Mocknick, and Billy Ellison up front. And a turnover by Campbell. Davis to Thomas Hill. Five to nothing, Duke. When Duke creates those turnovers, Mel, it's like there's a vacuum on the offensive end of the court that just sucks everybody down that way to the basket. Ten-second violation. You would expect the Campbell kids to be very nervous. Their coach, Billy Lee, said will be shaken worse than a wet dog in the wind. <laughs> the off-quoted coach of Campbell. He's been the king of the one-liners, Mr. Yeah, absolutely. Campbell with a man-to-man. -man. Really confident.
Bryce trailing on Leitner, trying to double team him. He moves outside and carries the three. And it's eight to nothing, Duke. Campbell University has an excellent basketball team. Mel, they play hard. They do a really nice job on the offensive and defensive ends of the court. But they are overmatched tonight. Steve Martin puts it up. Rebounded by Tony Lang. They really need to get one to go. Hurley to Leitner. Mark Mocknick rebounds for Campbell. Campbell's not a team that's going to run it up and down. Nice wraparound pass to Ellison. But Campbell still has not scored for almost four minutes into the game. Lang from the baseline. Knocked out of bounds by Christian Leitner. Duke really likes to get up and down the court, and Mike Krzyzewski, regardless of the opponent, wants his Blue Devils to get out and play aggressively. And Duke with a little pressure in the backcourt. 1-2-2 two, two press. Mucknick for three. They call him money for his ability to hit the big shots, and Mark Mucknick has Campbell on the board. Campbell with a little pressure. 2-2-1. Two, two, Montenegro's father, Frank, was a high school teammate of former Virginia coach and current athletic director at Davidson, Terry Hollow. Bobby Hurley puts up a three-pointer. And it's 11-3, Duke. Campbell representing the Big South Conference. They actually went from last place a year ago to winning the conference tournament championship this year. Nice and 19 and 11. Pick up the ball out there. Spinks turns it over. And then commits a foul. Leitner was off to the races. Not a bad foul. Spinks with a pretty good behind-the-back dribble, but when you start penetrating against the Duke defense, you've got to expect that people are going to harass you. Spinks just lost control of the ball. 16-54 remaining in the first half. It's 11-3 Duke. The Blue Devils 28-2 coming into this game, losing only to North Carolina and Wake Forest. They won their first 17 games this year before losing. Campbell in the zone. Scott Neely in the ball game with the 32 for the Campbell. Tony Lang connects, and it's 13-3 Duke. Lang moved into the starting lineup when Grant Hill got hurt. How long will Mike Krzyzewski stay with this lineup with Lang as a starter rather than Hill? They should stay with lineups as long as they win, Mel. <laughs> Held ball, and it'll be Campbell's ball, and the order to possession rule as Steve Martin is tied up. Mike Krzyzewski, who has the best winning percentage of any coach in NCAA tournament history, has got 27 and 7 tournament play. really being forced far outside by the Duke man-to-man -man defense. A lot of pressure on the basketball. Mocknick puts up a three. He can fill it up from out there. Mocknick not known as a shooter off the dribble that time. One good dribble drove Antonio Lang away and filled it up. And for Campbell to stay in this ball game, Mocknick is going to need to have a big game from the perimeter. He's hit two three-pointers to account for all the Campbell scoring. He's a 41% shooter from three-point range. Speaking of three-point accuracy, Leitner is hit 57%. Here he feeds Thomas Hill for two. And it's 15-6, Duke. And Campbell's own defense has to be spread very widely to defend the Duke perimeter game. And when you do that, Duke's going to have some openings inside. Campbell's turn it over. Hurley leading a four-on-one. And a blocking foul is called. Foul is on Steve Martin of Campbell. Duke out in a four-on-one fast break. And a good effort by Martin. And not a bad foul because the foul occurs before the basket. Martin steps in, obviously moving in front of Hurley. But that basket won't count. Good foul.
Back in Greensboro, where Duke has an early lead, as if the Blue Devils don't have enough advantages, they already have experience with a power outage. Earlier this year against NC State, the lights went out in Cameron, and Les Robinson and Mike Krzyzewski agreed to play with the auxiliary lights. Duke emerged victorious. Mel, we hope they don't need that experience here. All right, thank you, Leslie. I think this game could be played in the dark, and Duke would probably still be favored by 30-some points. Grant Hill is in the game now for the Blue Devils. Leitner posting up against the smaller Billy Ellison. Showing his versatility, Dan, he can hurt the insider out. Leitner's already got five points. What Campbell wants to do is to force Duke to play against their set defense every time, but you can see on that last possession, even when that occurs, Duke has the ability to score. Ellison gave Leitner a little pop with an elbow. He did. He said, I don't care about that reputation. Ellison backdooring him, but it's blocked by Bobby Hurley. <laughs> Smallest player on the floor getting the rejection and collecting high fives from his teammates. Ellison is six feet six inches tall, but he is not a great jumper. Mocknick misses the three. Rebound gathered in by Leitner. Well, they say Thomas Hill was pushed out. It looked like he had some help. And the ball goes over to Campbell. Campbell from the Big South Conference. The school includes Liberty, Radford, Davidson, Charleston South, Winthrop, UNC Asheville. Certainly not the caliber of competition Duke faces in the ACC. But, but that's happy to be here. That's what makes the NCAA tournament what it is, though. Schools like Campbell get in the tournament and they play against Duke and they give it their best effort. Joe Spinks over Grant Hill. Campbell can't get the ball inside at all against Duke's set defense. The alley oop broken up by Steve Martin. That was actually Spinks that went up there and knocked that away from Grant Hill. We talked about the athletic ability of Joe Spinks. He showed it there. Ellison testing Leitner slaps the ball away. Steve Martin, number 22. From Philadelphia, there's one other player from Indiana. The rest are from North Carolina. 13-20 remaining in the first half. Duke leads 17-6. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Mock <laughs> tried to make a shot out of that. I admire his phone. Except that that's against the rules. You can't throw the ball over the backboard from back to front. Cherokee Parks and Tony Lang enter the game for Duke. Thomas Hill and Leitner get breathers. And for Campbell, Doug Mitchell, the tallest player on the team at 6'8", checks in. He's a sophomore from Dudley, North Carolina, the same high school that produced his coach, Billy Lee. And a blocking foul is called against Doug Mitchell of Campbell. North Carolina has made 18 consecutive tournament appearances. Georgetown with 14. Duke with 9. Talked about their success earlier of reaching the Final Four each of the last four years and five out of the last six. Bobby Hurley puts it up. Good block out that time by Campbell. Steve Martin claiming the rebound. Ison with the off foul of jumper. And he scores. Keith Ison with the basket. That's a good aggressive play. You just get the idea that the Campbell kids may have been a little bit awestruck at the start of the game, but now they've run up and down a couple of times, gotten all the kinks out of the system. They're just going to play their game. Ooh, pushed by Mitchell. We asked Billy Lee what he was going to say to his team before the game, and he said, I've got to do something to loosen them up because they're very nervous. He said, I think I'll tell them there are 3 million Chinese who don't care that you're even in the tournament. And, of course, that's a conservative estimate. Of Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> Salon Hall checks in, number 23 for Campbell. He's a freshman from Wakeoff, Georgia. Steve Martin goes out. That foul was against Doug Mitchell. That's his second foul. <laughs> Just over 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Duke leading 17 to 8. Campbell in a man-to-man. Parks working for position inside, and Mitchell's going to get hit for his third foul. He hasn't been in there that long. 
But he's only six feet eight, and I think that that's an optimistic six feet eight. I don't really know that he's that tall, and he's battling inside against Cherokee Park. So Billy Ellison is quickly back in the game to replace Mitchell. Ellison at 6'6". Six, six. Dean Mocknick, Spinks, all 6'6". Six, six, the front line, and Duke has a guard, Grant Hill, who's taller than anybody on the front line for Campbell. That's traveling. Third turnover by Duke. Campbell has five team fouls. Duke has none so far. You get fouls by attacking the basket, Mel, and the Duke defense has forced the fighting Campbell so far away from the basket that they haven't had any opportunity to attack. Another turnover by Campbell. Hills trying to save it. Ellison up with a loose ball. Ooh, and an elbow to the head of Parks. He got away with it. Hurley fouls Keith Eisen, and Bobby doesn't like the call. Eisen doing a great job. We talked about attacking the basket, and Eisen attacks. We mentioned that Ellison had smacked Leitner before. <laughs> Gets Cherokee Parks right there. I guess he's sort of intimidated, right? <laughs> Gillette presents Sensor. This is the number two seed Indiana meets Eastern Illinois. If the Hoosiers win that game, will they have a victory celebration afterwards? Without it. Grant Hill lays it in. And Duke leads 19 to 8. Of course, most basketball fans know that Bob Knight canceled the team's postseason banquet after Indiana lost the final regular season game against Purdue. Imagine what it'll do if they lose in the tournament. Campbell still having difficulty getting inside, penetrating this Duke defense. Eisen goes strong to the basket and draws a foul. That's what Campbell needs to do is forget about who they're playing, forget about the size of the Duke Blue Devils. Eisen's game is to penetrate to the basket. He's done it the last few times down the court, and he's made some things happen for the Campbells. Foul is on Tony Lang. Steve Martin, that wild and crazy guard, has checked in for Campbell. I'm sorry, I, Dan, I just couldn't lose this. We're going to have to do something about you. Eisen hits the free throw. A pensive Mike Krzyzewski. Now, realistically, Duke heavily favored to win this game. It'd be a major surprise if they lost it. Does Coach K have something in mind in terms of strategy today other than just winning the game? Might he be working on certain things? Of course, his Duke team has not been back together from all the injuries for very long, so he wants us to work on his team, his stuff. So Martin's going to pick up that foul, but Mike Krzyzewski wants his Blue Devils to be sharp, and he doesn't care against whom they're playing. You mentioned Bob Knight. Uh, Coach K played for him at Army and later coached under him, a Knight protege. Back when Coach K went to Duke, he said a lot of people thought I was going to show up driving an Army Jeep, wearing fatigues, and jump out shooting a gun because of the background at Army. Grant Hill misses the shot, rebounded by Joe Spinks, the leading rebounder in the Big South Conference the last two years. I think Mike Krzyzewski has finally gotten away from the shadow of being a Bob Knight protege. Mike Krzyzewski is his own man and has always been. Mel Proctor with Dan Bonner. We're at the Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. His first round action continues in the East region. The winner of this game will meet the winner of the Texas-Iowa game coming up. We're midway through the first half. Duke, as expected, leading 19-9 is the score. Now, oh, Mocknick was open, but Joe Spinks didn't get him the ball. Shot clock winding down on the Camels. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. They're going to have trouble getting off a shot. Mocknick forces one up. Duke's defense just awfully tough. Leitner sets up in the post. They double-team him. That leaves Hurley open for the three. Ellison. Oh, what a Great play. play by Hill. But it's out of bounds to Campbell. Grant Hill apparently was out of bounds. 
Now Ellison's got Leitner beaten, but here comes Grand Hill. He gets faked out, but has the presence to slap that ball away. And Grand Hill out for a couple of games with an injury, just asked to come out of the basketball game. And Mocknick takes a seat as well, but Grand Hill a little winded. Scott Neely is in for Campbell, and Doug Mitchell, who picked up three quick fouls earlier, replaces Billy Ellison. 9.40 remaining in the half. Duke leads 19-9. Eisen and Martin in the backcourt with Mitchell, Spinks, and Neely for Campbell. Neely puts one out. Mitchell showing his jumping ability, but he loses the ball out of bounds. With Leitner and Parks in the game, the height disparity between the Blue Devils and the Fighting Camels, the Fighting Camels, easy for you to say. <laughs> Leitner and Parks both at 6'11". Duke's a lot bigger, that's what I was trying to say. I understood you perfectly. Cherokee Park scores to make it 21-9 Duke. Campbell is 3 for 13 from the floor so far. Quick hands by Parks. And a substitution for Campbell. Salam Hall is back in, replacing Martin. It's been very difficult for Campbell to run its offense. A lot of teams have that trouble against the Blue Devils, though. You've been watching ACC basketball for a long time. Is this one of the best defensive teams Duke has ever had? I think so. I think when Hurley's healthy and when Grand Hill's healthy, and they're hitting on all cylinders, they certainly are. One of the best teams, period, not just defensive teams. Spinks against Parks. Eisen goes strong to the basket. Mitchell with the offensive rebound, one of the few that Campbell has had so far. Eisen appears to be one of the few guys for Campbell who's willing to take it in there. Mitchell had that rebound, but he didn't put it back up, and the shot clock's running down because the ball didn't hit the rim. And a turnover by Campbell. Hurley to Thomas Hill. And he'll go to the free throw line. Nothing in, David. Nothing in, David. Foul is on Keith Eisen. And Duke shooting well early, 60% from the floor. Campbell is struggling even to get off shots. Thomas Hill off to a fast start with seven points. Mark Mocknick leads Campbell with six on a pair of three-pointers. Mocknick returns. He's a junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Billy Lee really shuttling players in and out early. Trying to find a combination that will work. Thomas Hill, a third-team All-ACC selection this year. He has a brother who's also involved in this bracket, playing for... University of Texas will be in action later tonight against Iowa. The Hills are from Lancaster, Texas. Nine points for Thomas Hill, and Duke leads 23 to 9 with eight and a half remaining in the first half. Spinks is called for traveling. That's the 10th turnover by Campbell. 10 to 4 in turnovers, and Duke has scored 13 points off those turnovers. Campbell has not converted. Duke is a team that, if you turn the ball over, they're going to run down the court, and they're going to get easy baskets. Leitner from Hurley, Parks on the follow. Campbell in that 2-3 zone, and once you throw the ball up to Leitner, it completely breaks down the zone defense. Nobody available to block out Parks. Cherokee Parks, the heir apparent to Christian Leitner, who is a senior. Billy Ellison. Like Leitner got a piece of it. They know who to get it to in the open court, don't they? Hurley. Oh, nice job by Eisen. Campbell's got a 5 on one and buries it and it's 25 to 11 Duke 
couple of these Campbell players are not at all intimidated by Duke. Ellison and Eisen both taking it right through the Blue Devils, and Eisen comes up with it again. For a little run by the Camels, Spinks puts up a three. And the crowd getting into it now, and a lot of people pulling for the underdog. I think Bowie's Creek may be closed. I think everybody's <laughs> Bowie's Creek is here. Although we understand they are watching the game at Shell's Place, a snack shop on campus, as well as the Carter Gymnasium, where they have a large screen set up. Hurley penetrates. Mocknick is up with it. A chance to cut the Duke lead to single digits. That's an offensive foul on Keith Eisen, who put an elbow into Bobby Hurley. Billy Lee isn't buying that call. And we get a timeout with 631 remaining in the first half. Duke has an 11 point lead. South scoring Duke five to nothing in the last minute 17 seconds. Bring on the Bulls next. <laughs> Which Bulls? The Durham Bulls. Yes, good. I don't think they mean Michael Jordan the Chicago Bulls. Bobby Hurley for three. And it's 28-14, Duke. All those Campbell students were shown at the conclusion of the Big South Tournament holding up signs that said, we want Duke. And when Mike Krzyzewski was asked about that, he said, well, I guess that means we want Campbell. <laughs> but Duke has doubled the score. Close to a five-second call, isn't it? And a steal by Brian Davis. He misses the slam. Speaking of dunks, at yesterday's practice session, Coach K turned his guys loose at the end of the practice, and they put on a dunking exhibition that was beyond belief. It brought people out of their seats. Well, this one would bring people out of their seats only because the ball would be falling on you if you didn't get out of your seats. For all their dunking exhibition yesterday, Davis lets this one slip away. That's rather embarrassing. You know that he's going to get some ribbing from his teammates about that. Keith Eisen is back in the game at guard for Campbell. We have 540 remaining in the half. Duke leads by 14. Eisen and Martin in the backcourt with Spinks, Ellison, and Mocknick up front. Back door to Mocknick. Nice pass by Joe Spinks. With Duke defending the Campbell offense all over the court, there wasn't any help back there. And Duke turns it over. The seventh turnover in the first half for the Blue Devils. Campbell fans are getting into the act. Well, again, if you're Mike, Shuse Mike Shusevsky, you want your team to be sharp. Campbell looked nervous early, but uh, they seem to have shaken that off. Spinks for three. Made a couple of three-point shots. That helps the nerves. Bachnick hit two of them. Leitner with his great hands really has the ability to catch the ball in traffic. And a foul is called on Martin. That's his third. Steve says, excuse me. The foul's really adding up to the Camels. Ryan Davis leaves. Campbell with nine team fouls. There you see the Duke Blue Devils with only two. Player of the Year in the ACC, Christian Leitner, first-team All-American as well. And leading candidate for National Player of the Year honors. Neely returns. He replaces Steve Martin. Scott Neely was the Big South Rookie of the Year. It marked the second straight year that a Campbell won that award. Joe Spinks won it last year. Less than five minutes remaining in the half. Duke leads 29-16. And gets by Hurley who fouls him. He's got some quickness. Eisen getting very aggressively to the basket. That's a couple of times now he's driven in. Two fouls he's drawn against Bobby Hurley. Keith Eisen a transfer from Saddleback Junior College in California. Originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. And the ball is kicked. 
Get a look at Antonio Lang right there. The injuries to Bobby Hurley and to Grant Hill forced Lang into the lineup, and Lang really produced. Mocknick for three. He hit two earlier. Spinks rebounds and gets a block by Lang. Nice little push by Spinks to get that rebound. Keith Eisen with a baseline jumper. Hurley says, let's run. To Lang for the jam. Four points for Tony Lang, and Duke leads 31-16 as we approach the four-minute mark. That's an awfully good play by Hurley. You take out one defender. Makes the odds better on the fast break. Back door to Mocknick. And it's out of bounds to Duke. With 3.50 remaining in the first half, Duke has opened up a 15-point lead over the 16th seed, Camel Camel. Final four this year, they would tie the Cincinnati Bearcats of the late 50s and early 60s for second place in the list of most consecutive Final Four appearances. UCLA, the leader, appearing in 10 straight Final Fours. If Duke wins this year, they would also become the first repeat champion since the UCLA Bruins in 72 and 73. Duke has Bobby Hurley, Thomas Hill, Tony Lang, Grant Hill, and Christian Leitner on the floor. And it's out of bounds to Campbell. For the Fighting Camels of Campbell University, it's Mocknick, Mitchell, Spinks, Neely, and Ison. Campbell the least winning in the offensive rebounding category. Well, the problem there is Duke is missing it, so not many offensive rebounds to be had. Mocknick with a three-pointer. Spinks takes it back up. Lang sends it back out. Neely puts up a three. Okay, Leitner ran into Mitchell and knocked him about four feet. Joe Spinks with a scoop. They're having trouble getting anything around the basket. And the arrow points to Duke. That's great scrap by Campbell. Welcome to first round action in the East Region, the Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. Duke leading Campbell 31-16, the matchup of the top seed and 16th seeded teams. Campbell making its first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. They were formerly an NAIA school and went to the NAIA finals in 1975. Campbell overmatched, but they're making a game of it anyway. They've continued to battle. They've had a tough time getting the ball anywhere close to the basket on offense. The Duke defense has been tremendous. Bobby Hurley with a three-pointer. Leitner tips it to Tony Lang. Neely up with a loose ball for Campbell. Campbell's done a nice job forcing the outside shot. There's Hurley with a steal. Grant Hill to Thomas Hill. Eleven points for Thomas Hill and Duke leads 33-16. Duke really makes a lot of offense from its defense. Hurley comes up with the steal, the pass to Grant Hill. They get down the court so well, and boy, can they finish a play. Joe Spinks gets the foul, and he knew he shouldn't have tried <laughs> as soon as that whistle blew. It's a second foul on Spinks, the 10th team foul, and a three-point play for Thomas Hill now has 12 points. Duke by 18 with less than two minutes remaining in the first half, and the Blue Devils beginning to pull away. This game going just about as expected. Mocknick on the drive. Nice move, but he comes up short. Duke just too big. Spinks was in there battling, but too many big guys like Leitner and Hill inside. Leitner hasn't taken many shots so far. He moves out and misses. 
And Mocknick is knocked down by Tony Lang. Antonio Lang came over the back of Doug Mitchell and drove Mitchell into Mocknick to create the foul. Second foul on Lang and the 14th foul on Duke. Cherokee Parks returns to the Duke lineup. He replaces Lang. Parks, a 6'11 freshman from Huntington Beach, California. Leitner and the man-to-man -man is now going to have to go out and match up against Joe Spinks. Mocknick. Parks with a rebound for Duke as we approach the one-minute mark. Thomas Hill having a big first half, and he has two more. That gives him 14. The Fighting Camels have done an excellent job keeping the ball out of the hands of Leitner around the basket in scoring position, but Thomas Hill has made him pay for it. He's been open from the perimeter, and he's cashed in. Ison on the drive, and that's 12 straight shots missed by Campbell. And you can clearly see from that play why, Mel. Ison gets to the basket, but unlike a six foot six or a six foot seven guy they're waiting for him there's a couple of six eleven guys and he's got to shovel it underneath salam hall is back in for campbell replacing mark mocknick and billy ellison will also return in a minute and neely misses that's 13 straight shots that campbell has missed and that's the time remaining in the first half only three fighting camels have scored in this first half and now Duke can work for the last shot. Thomas Hill leads Duke with 14. He's the leading scorer in the game. Mark Mocknick has eight to top Campbell. Grant Hill will move to the point guard spot when Bobby Hurley was hurt. That may eventually be his position. Ison steals it from him, though. Ison. He missed 14 straight shots now. Half-court shot by Grant Hill. Just missed. That's the end of the first half with the score. Duke 36, Campbell 16. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships. John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. And by United, come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. So North Carolina, you're familiar with the Four Corners. This is our version of it. We call it the Quad Split, just to show you that the action is hot in all four regions. So we welcome you back to our studios in New York. Jim Nance again with uh, Billy Packer. And uh, Billy, let's set the lineup, first of all, in the second half of our doubleheader tonight. Uh, you'll be seeing all or parts of uh, Eastern Illinois against Indiana, UConn against Nebraska. It's uh, USC against Northeast Louisiana and Texas against Iowa. That's the second half of the doubleheader. The uh, Camels in that half, Billy, missed their last 14 shots. Well, they're going up against one of the top defensive teams in the country, and I think the Duke will extend them out here in the second half. Be tough game for Campbell to even be in it in the second half. Billy, let's go through the uh, afternoon set at Greensboro. It was Missouri by 11 over West Virginia as Anthony Peeler had 25 points. Three power outages, if you haven't heard, in three hours and eight minutes to complete this game. And uh, West Virginia led Billy going into the first outage by four. It's the second game this year they had a power outage, and the other one was at Rhode Island. They led in that one before the outage and then lost. And then on the way home, their bus broke down. But how about Peeler? Anthony Peeler was outstanding today, 25 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. He did it in every respect, one of the college basketball's really quality players. <laughs> On and off the court, but once they got back, Anthony Peeler Picked stayed up fresh. right where he left off, didn't he, Jim? Really did. Peeler perhaps overshadowed this year by some of the other big names in college basketball, but one to watch out for here in the tournament. Next up for Mizzou will be Seton Hall. The Pirates, eight down with four minutes to go, came back to knock off LaSalle on a shot with two seconds to go. Terry DeHair nailed the jumper inside the three-point stripe, and the Hall wins it. The four seed advances to play Missouri next. 
Now, Ohio State and Mississippi Valley State, the uh, Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley scored the game's first four points, and then Ohio State won on a 34 to four run, and it's now 39 to 18. They're about to start the second half in that game. Uh, Stanford and uh, Alabama had a seesaw game. Uh, eight ties, 12 lead changes. Sprewell had 18 in the second half for the Tide, and uh, Alabama advances now. Next will be North Carolina for uh, Alabama. And Billy, when you talk about North Carolina, Alabama, that's really kind of a, a game we're used to seeing in a regional round, not in the second round. It's amazing how quickly the good games come, Jim. As a matter of fact, today I thought even opening round games were the equivalent of what we used to see in the second week. But that's a game against quickness versus size. It'll be a very interesting matchup. All right. Uh, Hubert Davis, by the way, was 2 out of 17 from the floor in that game, but 11 of 11 from the free throw line. Montrose with 22 and 13. Midwest region action. It's Georgia Tech uh, leading over Houston by 10, and there's 7 minutes, 12 seconds to go in the first half at Milwaukee. Now, uh, earlier today in Milwaukee, Memphis State out-rebounded Pepperdine 45 to 25, and Hardaway had a big day with 21 points and 7 assists to lead the Tigers to victory. Next up for Memphis State will be Arkansas. The three seed in the Midwest, an 80 to 69 win over Murray State. And uh, after the game, Coach uh, Nolan Richardson, uh, very emotional about the fact that he knocked out one of his longtime former assistants, Scott Edgar, the coach at Murray State. Take a look at this. <laughs> there was no winner. <laughs> You know, Scott's like my son. When you end some one season, when he's been with me so long, and you look, look down, and and here's a guy you got to play against. It's it's. Uh, uh, I, sometimes I don't, I don't uh, think that people realize the closeness that people can become. Mm. Quite a, uh, a touching moment after that game as Arkansas advances over Murray State. Now, uh, BYU and LSU. This is taking place in West Region action in Boise. LSU had a big lead early, but now the Cougars are coming back. It's a four-point game and uh, 10 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first half in Boise. Uh, earlier today in uh, Boise, West Region action, the three-seed Florida State won 78-60. Yeah, but Billy... Charlie Ward, their starting point guard at dislocated shoulder, x-rays tomorrow. Means an awful lot to that club. He provides great leadership for the team. He also handles the ball and is a very key defender in their defensive scheme. Next for Florida State will be Georgetown. Alonzo Mourning almost had a triple-double, 21 points, 11 rebounds, 7 blocks. And right now, let's get you some live action from Boise in the West Region. That BYU-LSU game we mentioned. I see Shaquille O'Neal has just gone to the bench for the Tigers. Here's our guys there, Sean McDonough, Bill Walton. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Boise, where LSU has a four-point lead. Tigers have led throughout. Russell Larson with two on a nice pass from Nick Sanderson. The largest lead for LSU, clad in the white, seven points. Jamie Brandon, shut off by Mark Heslop. LSU off to a fairly good start right now. Their offense, though, has been mainly a result of their tough defense, which is anchored by O'Neal, who's now on the bench. Williamson with a tough one-hander that wouldn't fall, trost the rebound. This is Nate Paul, the point guard, number 23. He's on the floor with Sanderson and Heslop, the three-guard line. Larson and Trost, the forwards. And Larson's shot was short. Billy, what about this game out west? Well, it's kind of interesting. Shaquille O'Neal sitting down early in this ball game. I think that Dale Brown uh, feels that he's got enough firepower coming off that bench. He's had a hard time coming up with what is going to be the team on the floor, but there's a lot of talent at LSU, and it looks like they could advance. Okay, we'll keep you posted on this game and all the others, but we see now at Greensboro they're getting set for the second half, so we'll get you back there as we continue on the road to the Final Four. Ticket recipients will be selected from a random drawing of applications. Call 1-900-646-1993. $1 for the first minute, 50 cents each additional minute. Applications must be received by April 30th, 1992. This message provided by the NCAA. 
The top-seeded Duke Blue Devils lead by 20 at the half over Campbell University. And we'll return to Greensboro after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. The NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. Subway, sandwiches and salads for today's healthy lifestyles. And by John Hancock Financial Services, real life, real answers. The Duke has a 20-point lead over Campbell at the half, and if they win, will advance to meet the winner of the Texas-Iowa game, which is coming up. And right now, let's go to Leslie Visser. Now the folks from Campbell think they're rushing their shots. They're not being patient enough. They want to come out with a little more confidence the second half. But as Coach Billy Lee said before the game, hey, they're shaking bacon. We're buying fries. No. <laughs> the king of the one-liners, Billy Lee. And a look at the halftime stats. Campbell shooting only 19% from the floor. The Camels missed their last 14 shots. They also committed 14 turnovers. And you can see Duke and uh, capitalized on those miscues. Now that's not anything that Campbell needs to be embarrassed about. There's a lot of people that Duke capitalizes on their miscues. Duke really running very well, cutting off the running game for the Fighting Camels. Mocknick with eight points leads the way for the Fighting Camels. Thomas Hill with 14 has almost as many as Campbell. Seton Hall came from behind to beat LaSalle 78-76. Missouri outlasted West Virginia 89-78. The game that took three hours and ten minutes to complete due to three power outages. Uh, those two teams setting an NCAA record for most power failures in one game. <laughs> and we're behind that pace in this particular game. Thank goodness. <laughs> Campbell's ball as we begin the second half. They have Keith Eisen and Steve Martin in the backcourt with Joe Spinks, Billy Ellison, and Mark Mocknick up front. I don't know who that pass was intended for, but Leitner got it. It's a 15 turnover. Thomas Hill having a big game has two more. You know, Bell, it's one thing to talk about how you want your team to play with more confidence, but when Leitner snatches the first pass you take out of the air and Thomas Hill banks it in, it's hard to have a lot of confidence. Duke has Bobby Hurley, Thomas Hill, Tony Lang, Christian Leitner, and Brian Davis on the floor, and Leitner makes a steal. Leitner's got two steals and two Campbell possessions. And Leitner gets whacked. Billy Ellison has shown no reluctance to whack people. That's for sure. He's a very aggressive basketball player, has been frustrated this evening. Operating as a center at six feet six, it's very difficult when you have to go up against Leitner and Parks. Both Ellison and Mocknick missed all of last year with injuries. Ellison had a broken hand, and Mocknick was out of the broken ankle. And the Fighting Camels finished in last place in the Big South, but they turned it around this year. Leitner knocks it down in a turnaround jumper. 24-point lead for Duke. Thomas Hill has 16 points. That's as many as Campbell has scored so far. Unfortunately for the Camels, their points have been matched by their turnover. Brian Davis scores. And Duke beginning to turn this one into a major rout. First two points for Brian Davis, and Campbell will take a timeout as Duke has exploded to a 42-16 lead. Some trucks don't know when to quit. They're playing Duke. We're like a dog chasing a car. Now that we've caught it, what do we do with it? Well, unfortunately, to this point, the car is making tread marks on them. Duke leads by 26 early in the second half. Dyson. Ellison with the offensive rebound, but blocked from behind by Brian Davis, who's called for a foul. That's his first foul. And the first team foul on the Blue Devils. Campbell continues to battle. That's now they've got 12 offensive rebounds, Mel, but they only have two baskets from those 12 offensive rebounds. Ellison's going to get an opportunity to get a couple from the line here, however. Billy Ellison, the second leading scorer on the team, averaging 13 and a half points a game. Now wait a minute, if you're going to bank it in, you got to call it. Not in Bowie's Creek. 
Ellison with two to make it 42 18 to. We asked the uh, sports information director from Campbell what a big night in Bowie's Creek consists of, and he said, well, after a long pause, you have to go to Fuquay Arena, a nearby town, to have Mexican food at El Dorado. <laughs> Traveling is the call, and the ball goes over to Campbell. Where is Bowie's Creek? Well, it's located between Raleigh and Fayetteville. And as the press release said, it's near the Cape Fear River and only 11 miles from Dunn. It pretty well nails it down, doesn't it? Spinks misses from the corner. Early pushes it up to Brian Davis. How long will Mike Krzyzewski stay with his starters? I mean, they're turning this into a blowout fast. Well, the problem is if you're Mike Krzyzewski, you put somebody else in, and I don't, it's doubtful that it'll get any better. Mike Krzyzewski has not had his Duke team together for very long. Last week at the ACC tournament was the first time that the whole group was back together as they were in January. And Mike Krzyzewski made no bones about the fact that he wanted his team together in the ACC tournament to play three games. And he wanted them together playing this weekend. So his team is working on some things they need to work on. And even though the games are out, Leitner picks up a foul right there. I don't know that Mike Krzyzewski is, is going to take his starters out anytime soon. Well, Campbell has missed 17 consecutive shots. It's 44-18 Duke. We're only, only three minutes into the second half. For the game, Campbell is 8 for 22 in the 17th straight. Martin puts up a three-pointer, and that breaks the ice. 44-21, the first three points of the game for Steve Martin, who's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was a starter last year who's been coming off the bench as the sixth man this season, but he started tonight's game. And a blocking foul is called on Billy Ellison of Campbell. That's his second foul. Campbell playing that zone defense, and when Leitner attacks the zone coming from behind, he's just very difficult to find. You'd wonder how you could lose a guy that size, but coming from behind, it's tough to knock down the pass. Bobby Hurley has it stripped by Ison. Boy, Davis recovers quickly. Campbell had a three on nobody fast break, and Davis got back. Spinks with a three-pointer. Back-to-back three-pointers by Campbell, and it's 44-24, Duke. You've got to admire the spunk in this Campbell team. This Campbell team is the champions of their Congress, of their conference. They're not going to quit. And Leitner is fouled. Looks like Billy Ellison got him from behind. Vital statistics on the uh, fighting camels. We mentioned from Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. School in Roman is uh, 4,900. They also have a satellite campus in Malaysia. Leighton misses the three-pointer. Why are you chuckling? It's true. I wouldn't pick it up. Martin for three. Mocknick with a tip in. Here come the Camels. And as our Billy Packer mentioned before the ball game, at Campbell University is one of the oldest basketball schools basketball camps in the country started in 1954 by Fred McCall and Bones McKinney Leitner scores from the inside and looks like Billy Ellison is hurt well, Ellison is down Doug Mitchell has come in and let's see what happened. Well, you spend your evening bouncing off Christian Leitner, which is what happened right there. You can see as Hurley passes the ball inside the zone defense, the Campbell players just simply are not big enough to keep the ball away from Christian Leitner. So the trainer has come out to take a look at Ellison. Not much the trainer can do for Ellison. Like he had the wind knocked out of him. 
got hit in the stomach. Hopefully he'll be okay. Cherokee Parks is back in the game for Duke. And Ellison is on his feet. Although he'll be coming out. They had to take him out or they charged with a timeout since the trainer came out on the floor. As did the coach Billy Lee. We have 15-26 remaining in the game. Duke leads by 20. And traveling is called on Joe Spinks, who dragged his pivot foot. That's the 17th turnover by Campbell. Duke, as most fans know, located in Durham, North Carolina. They went 28-2 this year. They won 17 straight before losing. And look at that tournament record. Turnover by the Blue Devils. Steve Martin to Joe Spinks. Curley has the loose ball. Lichter throws the land. Amazing, a guy 6'11 and 245 can run the floor like he can. What a great job Hurley did weaving through traffic to create that situation. Leitner picks up the foul. Second foul on Christian Leitner. Leitner's an interesting guy. We GQ wants him for its October cover. People Magazine has done a feature on him. Vogue wants him in its 50, or excuse me, People Magazine is going to include him in the 50 Most Beautiful People edition. Vogue wants him. And of all things, the Cat Companion has asked him for an interview. Well, he is, after all, a cat lover and has a cat of his own named Orea, which is a female for Oreo. Okay. Christian Leitner says so. I buy it. Grant Hill with a touch pass to Leitner. That counts and a foul. Hurley really can get the ball ahead on the fast break, and Grant Hill just with a great touch pack. Poor, poor Joe Spinks gets there too little, too late. All he does is get himself run over. But that's the kind of effort that has characterized the Campbell game today. They have not rolled over and died. They're still out there trying very hard. It's just obvious from a talent standpoint, they're very overmatched. Thomas Hill is back in. Ellison, who was shaken up earlier, returns for Campbell. Christian Leitner with 14 points. Mail apparently arrives at Duke in bundles, and they have two student secretaries who help Christian Leitner answer his fan mail. That's how popular he is. And as you said, many of them are 12 and 13 year old girls who scream like he's a member of the Beatles. He's very popular with 12 and 13 year olds, but I'll tell you what, he's also popular with the older set, too. My neighbor. We won't mention her age, but she's old enough to know better. Came over to the house before I came here and asked if I could get an autographed picture of Christian Layton. I'm working on it. Ellison takes it strong to the basket. And a foul is called on Cherokee Parks. More NCAA tournament play coming up. Eastern Illinois against Indiana, Connecticut, and Nebraska. That should be a good one. USC led by Baby Jordan. Harold Miner and Iowa meeting Texas the final game on our slate here in Greensboro. Duke leads by 25 with 14 minutes left in the game. Steve Martin misses. Keith Eisen rebounds for the Camels. Eisen has been in the middle of everything this evening. He's somebody who's shown absolutely no fear out here tonight. Martin for three. Steve Martin with six points, and it's 51-29, Duke. Grant Hill, who played sparingly tonight, misses the jumper. Parks crashes the boards, and a foul is called on Doug Mitchell of Campbell. Mitchell actually had inside position, but Parks had the basketball, and Mitchell backed into him. Four fouls on Mitchell. And five team fouls on Campbell. Scott Neely returns, replacing Steve Martin for Campbell. And Joe Spinks is back in for Mitchell.
Hurley. And got it. And a foul. Bobby Hurley can hit that jumper, so you have to respect it. But boy, he gets to the basket very well. Sometimes he goes in there, you think he's looking to pass the ball. You can see the defense went to the passing lanes, and so Hurley takes the shot. We saw his brother Danny in action earlier today for Seton Hall as they came from behind to beat LaSalle despite a 33-point effort from LaSalle's Randy Woods. Duke leads 54-29 with 13-23 remaining in the second half. And Randy Woods from LaSalle, even though his career, college career ended today, he had to impress a few people with his skill. Mocknick. Uh, the miss tipped in by Mark Mocknick. Good second effort by Mark. 12 points for Mocknick, the leading scorer on this team, averaging 15 and a half points a game. Thomas Hill knocks another one down. He has 18 points. Duke leads by 25. Mocknick for three. Mocknick's another guy for the Fighting Camels who's come out and after some initial nervousness has really gotten his game on track. Well, the Fighting Camels are no match for Duke, but you can see that in their own conference, they're an outstanding team. They've got some guys who can shoot. They don't have the size of the major Division I schools like Duke, but they've got some talented kids. Steve Martin is back in. Replacing Ison. Duke has been on fire in the second half. They hit 10 of 13 shots, shooting 77 percent. Cherokee Parks rebounded by Scott Neely. Mocknick on the dish to Martin. Good fake. Mocknick for three more. And a foul underneath. The basket counts, and the foul is called on Cherokee Parks. Mocknick has cut the Duke lead to 56-37. He has 18 points. He comes in with the reputation as a three-point shooter, and he did an excellent job going from one side of the court to the other, finding the open spot, and his teammates did a good job of ball movement to get the ball to him when he was open. Now that's a non-shooting foul on Cherokee Parks battling Ellison for the rebound, so the Camels will get it. If they could hit a three, this could turn out to be a six-point play, huh? They could use a few of them. Martin for three. Way short. Bobby Hurley blocked by Spinks, but he's going to be called for a foul. That's the fourth foul on Joe Spinks. That was really a quick move by Spinks. Hurley, I believe, again, penetrated in with the idea that he was going to pass. At the last minute, the passing lanes closed off. He went for the hoop, and Spinks reacted very, very quickly. Came pretty close to a good block. And Bobby Hurley will shoot two free throws. Billy Packer and I worked the LSU Duke game earlier this year, right after Bobby Hurley had gotten hurt, and I found Mike Krzyzewski's reaction interesting. Of course, he hated to lose Bobby Hurley with a broken foot. But he was looking forward to the challenge of what his team could do without Hurley. And he thought at that time that if Grant Hill got some experience at the point and Tony Lang played it forward, it would make his team a better team in the long run. And that appears to be what has happened so far. <laughs> 38 remaining in the game. Just about the point it looks like Duke is going to blow Campbell out of the water. They hit a couple of three-pointers and come back. Campbell actually shooting 8 of 17 from three-point range, only 5 of 31 from two-point range. The Camels can't get anywhere close to the basket. Maybe they shouldn't even try. I think that's the moral there. Stay away from the basket. Ellison will try it inside and finds it rough going. That's what happens when they get near. Ison with a steal. And a foul coming up. Against Cherokee Parks for pushing off. Duke shooting 56% from the floor. Campbell turning the ball over 17 times. Christian Leitner has 15. Mark Mocknick 
filling it up from three-point range. He's hit four of six. He leads Campbell with 18. Campbell has actually cut way down on their turnovers, Mel. At one point in the game, the Campbells had 16 points and 16 turnovers. Thomas Hill also has 18 for Duke. For Campbell, they have Steve Martin, Mark Mocknick, Scott Neely, Billy Ellison, and Keith Eisen. For Duke, it's Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurley, Grant Hill, Brian Davis, and Tony Lang. Martin hits it. That's a two-pointer. He was over the line. The arc on that ball was high enough that it could have been a three-pointer. It traveled that far. And Campbell just will not give up. They trailed by as many as 26 points. They've cut that lead down to 18. Those three-pointers, that wasn't a three, but those threes will keep you in a game if you can hit them. Of course, that was uh, LaSalle's approach in our first game. Leitner scores. But they're two three-point shooters, Randy Woods and Jack Hurd. And they've won a lot of games this year and almost upset Seton Hall. See the three-point shots they put up. Eisen with a short jumper. 59-41, Duke by 18 with 10 minutes left. And Brian Davis is fouled by Billy Ellison. That's his fourth foul. In the Midwest region in Milwaukee, Memphis State advanced with a victory over Pepperdine. Arkansas beat Murray State. USC playing Northeast Louisiana, Georgia Tech against Houston. Houston, of course, from the Southwest Conference. They're the tournament champion. And Texas, the team that Houston beat for the Southwest Conference Tournament Championship, will be involved in our next game here against Iowa as soon as Duke and Campbell are through. Texas beat Houston twice during the regular season. It's an old adage about it being difficult to beat the same team three times. And Houston thumped the Longhorns pretty good in the Southwest Conference Championship in the tournament. And the Houston-Georgia Tech game has gotten very close in the second half. Get up, get up. Davis makes one out of two, and Duke leads by 19 with 9.50 remaining in the game. Martin falls down. Salam Hall, number 23, is in the game for Campbell. Deflected. Hall comes up with it. Martin backs up to shoot a three. Great pass by Hurley to Tony Lang. Hurley has such great court awareness. And he makes good decisions on the fast break. Bobby Knight was talking about Bobby Hurley. He said he fills the same role for Duke's team as Mike Krzyzewski did for Knight's Army team, but Krzyzewski said, Bobby Hurley is quicker than I was. Speaking of Bob Knight, the Hoosiers will be in action against Eastern Illinois. Connecticut faces Nebraska. George Raveling has done a great job with that USC team, hasn't he? USC is really an exciting team to watch. A lot of people feel that that number two seed that they have is probably not a correct seating that maybe they should be seated a little lower than that. I disagree. I think USC is just a dynamite basketball team. One and one coming up for Salam Hall. Foul was on Tony Lang, his third. And the 17th foul on Duke. And there's some speculation that George Raveling may step down after this year to accept an executive position with the National Association of Basketball Coaches. George Raveling playing his cards close to the vest at the moment. Doesn't really have any comment about it. He says he'll think about it after the year's over. But he's had such a good time with this particular team. Kenny Blakeney, number four, is in the game now for North Carolina as Mike Krzyzewski begins to go to his bench. In the southeast region in Cincinnati, North Carolina and Alabama both won. Nebraska faces Connecticut in a battle of eight and nine seeds, and the top-seeded team, the Ohio State Buckeyes, face Mississippi Valley State. The Buckeyes handling Mississippi Valley State with ease. That Saturday matchup, Alabama and North Carolina, to look ahead a bit, will be a very good one. Ison with the off-balance shot. Billy Ellison rebounds, and he's fouled.
Third foul on Christian Leitner. Out west in Boise, Idaho, Georgetown and Florida State both won. LSU is playing BYU, and then Indiana will face Eastern Illinois. And as long as we're looking ahead to matchups in the future, that Georgetown-Florida State game has the potential to be a great game. Florida State, of course, will be at a great disadvantage if Charlie Ward, their point guard, is not able to play. He injured his shoulder. Won't know whether he can play until tomorrow. If Georgetown and LSU should both make it to the finals, uh, we have a matchup of Shaquille and Alonzo Mourning. They've got some finals. roadblocks to clear before they get there. Yes, they do. Leitner tips it back to Mocknick, who scores. Mark Mocknick with 20 points to lead Campbell, and it's 62-45, and it's beginning to get interesting. Duke starters have stayed in there. Blakeney was in just briefly for Duke. So Mike Krzyzewski has not gone deep to his bench yet. Brian Davis scores. And it's 66-45, Duke. And the Fighting Campbells have actually outscored the Blue Devils by one point in this half. The margin was 20 at halftime. And you are correct in stating that Duke's starters have been in there most of the way. Three-pointer by Leitner. He's got 20, and Duke leads 67 to 45. We're under eight minutes. That's the stake in the heart right there. I'll take one. And the Fighting Campbells will talk things over as they take a timeout. CBS. Lord, the team mascot, Gaylord, what do you think of the Duke Blue Devils? Oh, oh, Gaylord, that's no way to act. Is it true if you were to transfer to South Bend, you'd be the humpback of Notre Dame? <laughs> Back to you, Mel. Oh, Leslie. <laughs> it's very nice. Foul Next. committed by Keith Eisen. You know, with the mascot being named Gaylord, uh, we should mention that the Perry brothers, Gaylord and Jim Perry, both outstanding Major League Baseball pitchers, both attended Campbell University. Could you suppose that's Jim Perry in the other uh, mascot outfit? Well, I don't think that's Gaylord Perry in that outfit. I haven't seen that mascot throw any spitters. <laughs> Ellison is shaken up. He has had a tough night. He's got gotten belted both high and low. Higher seeds advancing in uh, eight games so far. The average margin of victory, nine points. The Big East, the ACC, and the Southeast Conference all have gone 2-0. and And, uh, yes, we were here for a bit of history this afternoon. Three power outages in the game between West Virginia and Missouri. A game we'll never forget. Three and holding, thankfully. Nice in Grand Hills. Father Calvin is in the building somewhere. He normally attends his son's games. Great NFL running back. Boy, Hill didn't look good on either one of those two free throws. 67-48, Duke with 7.23 remaining. And again, these Campbell kids have hung in there very, very well. Mocknick misses the three, and we got a push call against Joe Sims. He says, are you kidding me? I've got to do something in there against these big guys. Billy Lee said, we're going into a sword fight with a pocket knife of the matchup with Duke. That's five fouls now on Spink, so he's gone. The winner of this game will meet the winner of tonight's final game in Greensboro between Texas and Iowa. And that Texas-Iowa game ought to be a very interesting game. Both of those teams believe in the style where they run up and down the court. Iowa a little bigger, Texas a little quicker. Sphinx has fouled out, so he'll be leaving the game momentarily. He has 6.7 rebounds. And, and he'll be replaced by Doug Mitchell. Nice gesture on the part of Joe Spinks going around and congratulating his teammates. I and mean, this is a, a thrill these Campbell kids will never forget, playing in the NCAA tournament. They've given them a lot of work to get here. And through the first 13 minutes of the second half, outscoring the number one team in the country. Grant Hill still struggling with his free throw shooting. He needs a little more oomph behind that shot. The 74% free throw shooter, but he's missed three in a row. Sixty-eight, forty-eight, Duke. 
Just over seven minutes remaining. Tyson, Ellison, Mitchell, Mocknick, and Martin on the floor for Campbell. The Camels have won five in a row and nine out of ten coming into the tournament. The penetration by Eisen, but Mitchell misses the shot. It's awfully tough when you know those big guys from Duke are going to come to swat at the basketball. Grant Hill with a feed to Thomas Hill, who's fouled by Mitchell. And he's gone. That's five on Doug Mitchell. He picked up three fouls in the space of about 30 seconds earlier in the game. Billy Lee may have started this sword fight with a pocket knife. He's going to be relegated to a toothpick here soon as all his guys fall out of the game. Eric Meek, a 6'10 freshman from Escondido, California, has checked in for Duke. And Billy Lee taking this opportunity to have a discussion with the referees. Visiting with Jim Askew. And Jim Askew would prefer that that visit not occur, or at least be as short as possible. There's Mitchell leaving the basketball game with five fouls. Salam Hall replaces him. Billy Lee said, we're going to be the only team in the tournament without a stoplight in the city limits. And we have confirmed that there are no stoplights in Brewers Creek, North Carolina. Somebody did say there was one within three miles of the city limits, though. I don't know where that would be or why there would be one within three miles of Brewers Creek, but that's what the SID told me. Get up, Bill! Luke a few problems at the free throw line. That's going to be of some concern. Lots of time shooting free throws, Mel. It's a matter of concentration. And you would not be surprised if at this point in the basketball game with a 20-point lead that the Blue Devils' concentration might be slipping just a little. They've missed six of their last seven free throw attempts. That's unheard of for this Duke team. Leitner takes it away from Steve Martin. Hurley slips inside. This is to Leitner. He's very aware of where that three-point line is. What an added dimension for a guy 6'11", huh? The ability to go outside and hit the three as Leitner has hitting 57% of his three-point shots. Well, a lot of people thought that the perimeter shooting would be really an Achilles heel for Duke. Oh, Leitner picks up an assist on the feed to Thomas Hill, who now has 20 points. And now Mike Krzyzewski going deeper into his bench. Marty Clark is coming in. Meek came in a moment ago. And was there ever a doubt that Duke would win? I'm tired, Charlie. Come on, they're falling apart out there. One last time, and you can watch. Boys, the Idaho, the second-seeded Indiana Hoosiers, will meet the 15th seed, Eastern Illinois, elsewhere, Connecticut, Nebraska, Northeast Louisiana, and USC, and Iowa against Texas coming up here from Greensboro. We have 5.42 remaining in the second half. Duke leads 70 to 48. Mike Krzyzewski gradually getting into his bench. Marty Clark and Eric Meek are in the game. Leitner, Hurley, and Brian Davis, three starters, are still in the game. Good fake by Mark Mocknick into Billy Ellison. Stripped away by Marty Clark. Oh, the oh, pass. That pass. Hurley to Leitner. Duke's all-time assist leader. He passed assistant coach Tommy Amaker's mark earlier this year. He's got 10 assists in this game. He set a record for assists in the ACC tournament last weekend. Tournament that Duke won. Earlier I mentioned that Mike Krzyzewski's thoughts on the injuries to Hurley and, and Grand Hill that when they returned his team would be better because some of the other guys got a chance to play do you agree with that i think that's a very optimistic assessment that as a coach you have to make but in this case i think the events have worn him worn mike shisevsky's hopes out a lot of contact but no whistle taken down by christian leitner i think the principal guy who has stepped up is antonio lang he got a lot more minutes than he otherwise might have gotten and he's up to the level of the other Duke players, the five returning from last year, Mocknick now goes down. Eric Meek scoring the last basket. This looks like it might be a cramp, a leg cramp, the way Mocknick is holding his feet. These guys have really worked very, very hard. It's been awfully tough. 
all night long. Duke with 34 points in the paint. The Fighting Camels with only six. But you see what a game Mocknick has had. 23 points and nine rebounds against what you would have to concede is pretty good competition. That's his career high. 23 nine rebounds. points and nine boards for Mark Mocknick. And Billy Lee is out to take a look at him. Well, Billy Lee is really enjoying himself here, as he should. We tried to visit with him after yesterday's practice, and it took us 15 minutes to wait for all the well-wishers to, to leave. He was signing autographs and accepting cookies and gifts and all kinds of things. He is just thoroughly enjoying himself here. He said somebody had sent him a pair of dancing slippers because he was going to the big dance, and they were a pair of sneakers that somebody had covered with glitter. And he said he was sorry he wasn't wearing them yesterday. Well, I don't think the slipper has fit, but uh, the Fighting Camels have put it themselves well in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Mark Mocknick will leave. And that's going to look real good on this in the uh, media guide for next year where it tells you you get your career high in rebounding against Duke. Houston and Georgia Tech have a tight one going. Oh, that's boy, look at that LSU. It's out west from Boise. Salam Hall has replaced Mocknick for Campbell. We have 4-10 remaining in the game. Duke has a 26-point lead. And Duke in a little 3-2 zone. Steve Martin. That's a tough shot over top of the 6-11. Meek coming right at you. Martin has 10 points. Eric Meek to Marty Clark. Well done. Clark, a sophomore from Westchester, Illinois, and a kid who was an all-state selection in two different states, in Colorado and <laughs> Illinois. Three and a half remaining in the game. Duke pretty well has this one wrapped up. And we'll meet the winner of the Texas-Iowa game coming up. Duke has shot 77% in the second half, getting 17 and 22 shots. They've Shalom missed. Hall puts it up. They've missed six free throws, so they've missed more free throws than they have field goals in this half. Grant Hill with a great ball fake, but missed the slam, and we've got a foul. I think the pass went up for the jam, but was fouled. That guy has physical skills that are so good that it's frightening. The fake right there, Ison steps out of the way, slaps him across the elbow, which causes that missed dunk, but that's just a tremendous play by a guy who's about six feet eight. And Ison has fouled out. He becomes the third fighting camel to foul out of the game. Two starters and one of the first big guys off the bench are now gone. And it'll be Mocknick coming back in to replace him. So Mark Mocknick, who was shaken up earlier, comes back in, replacing Keith Ison. The Camels certainly did not go quietly. Ison leaves with seven points, three rebounds, and two assists. Grant Hill has made just one of four free throw attempts in this game. You saw him in the ACC tournament, Dan. Uh, he's coming back from an ankle injury. Is he at full strength yet? Oh, he had a fantastic game in the championship game of the ACC tournament against North Carolina. I would have to say, yes, he's back at full strength. They haven't needed him tonight. 78 to 50, Duke with three minutes remaining. And some more Blue Devil subs will be coming in in a moment. Mocknick with that three-point stroke, not this time. <laughs> Cherokee Parks and Christian Ash, the 6'8 sophomore from Heidelberg, Germany, checks in. Brian Davis and Tony Lang are finished for the night. Mocknick, 4-3. Having quite a night. 26 points for Mark Mocknick. Good things ahead in the future for Campbell. Uh, 
Ellison is a sophomore. Mocknick a junior. Joe Spinks a sophomore. Eisen is a junior. Neely, the rookie of the year in the Big South, is only a freshman. They don't have a senior on the team, so they should have another good year next season. And this tournament experience will bode well for them. Well, Mocknick was lining another one up now, and he just let the ball slip through his hands. Mocknick for three. Oh, yes. What a stroke. 29 points for Mark Mocknick. Duke leads by 22, but Mocknick has put on a shooting exhibition from three-point range tonight. His career high is 30, so that's certainly within reach. Marty Clark puts it up. Mocknick with the rebound. He has really been impressive. It's now 10 rebounds, so 29 points, 10 rebounds. Not too bad. Going for a career high with this shot. That was a long shot. <laughs> Cherokee Parks. Mike Rice, Rice rebounding. It's out of bounds to Duke. Mike Rice, number 40, in your picture right now, battling Meek. Rice only 6'8. Ron Burt checks in for Duke, replacing Grand Hill. Burt, who won a spot in a tryout, put on the intramural championship team at Duke. So he replaces Hill. And another substitution for Campbell, Bobby Murray, number four, junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, checks in. He is a national class power boat racer. Not quite sure how that will help Campbell College at this point, but it's rather interesting. <laughs> national class power boat race. Right. Steve Martin leaves the game, and Jerome Holly is in for Campbell. Down to the final minute of the game. And a steal by Marty Clark. He's got Bird ahead of him. Oh! Clark scores on the follow. -up. You were playing intramurals last year, and you came that close to getting a basket in the NCAA tournament. He's going to be disappointed about that. Our congratulations to Campbell University for a fine season. They'll lose this game, but they've made a strong showing here against the nation's best team, the Duke Blue Devils. Eric Meek sets it down. Duke leads 82-56. And we're under 20 seconds. There's Mognick again. Still trying for that career high. He's got 29. His career high is 30. It doesn't look like he's going to get it. <laughs> Bobby Murray was smelling that basket. Oh, Mike, Mike he, Rice just couldn't get him the ball. Five seconds left. He couldn't get the boat turned around in time to get over there. <laughs> Marty Clark with a three-pointer. And that'll do it as Duke advances, winning as expected. Over the 16 seated Fighting Camels of Campbell, 82-56, our final score. But a great performance from Mark Mocknick, who finished with 29 points, one off his career high, also had a career high in rebounds with 10 for Campbell. There's not too many guys that score 29 points against the Duke Blue Devils. I don't care which team they play on, but Mark Mocknick with a tremendous effort tonight. Christian Leitner and Thomas Hill each had 20 points for Duke as the Blue Devils advance to meet the winner of our final game coming up between Texas and Iowa. Missouri beat West Virginia. Seton Hall won by two over LaSalle earlier today, and they will meet on Saturday. The Chevrolet players of the game are Mark Mocknick from Campbell, who finished with 29 points. Thomas Hill from Duke, who had 20 for the Blue Devils. 82-56, our final score with Duke beating Campbell. And now let's go back to our New York studios and Pat O'Brien. Pat?
Actually, I'll take it. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer. Thank you very much, Bill Proctor. A year ago, a 29-point opening victory for Duke in its championship drive. That win was over Northeast Louisiana. Tonight, 26th the difference over Campbell. Let's get out to the West now. BYU and LSU. Here's Sean McDonough, Bill Walton. And welcome to those of you from Mississippi Valley State. Tonight in Greensboro, the national champions didn't have to walk, but they drove 54 miles for the Camels. The Campbell Fighting Camels, the longest shot in the field. And tonight you would expect that the Camels would be on the ropes, and they were early and off. And Bobby Hurley with the strip. Grand Hill finding Thomas Hill. And Duke by halftime, leading it by 20. Hurley's long pass to Grant Hill tips it to Christian Leitner, takes a few pity pat steps and puts it home. Leitner had 22. T. Hill had 20. Duke wins by 26 as the Camels missed 17 consecutive shots in the first half. Still represented their school rather well tonight. Hung in their gamely. 82-56 the final score. Duke plays the Iowa-Texas winner, and Iowa has the lead. Also, despite three stoppages for power outages in Greensboro, Missouri... Hello, everybody. Tom Suter, 530 Sports Headlines. Defending national champion Duke started its defense last night with the 82-56 win over the Gutty Camels of Campbell University. For Duke, it's step number one. I think we have an advantage because we've done it before. A lot of these teams have never won any championships. They're, you know, happy to, to, to be in the tournament. You know, we're going to win a national championship, so we're excited about it. Meanwhile, Carolina takes team seed and team was the darling of the tournament last night in Greensboro. Today, though, after losing to Duke, it's back to Bowie's Creek and Campbell University with thoughts of next year. There is a crowd of students waiting to welcome them home after their first ever NCAA game. These kids... Well, just getting to the tournament for them was a big win. I think this team's great. Um, I really appreciate what they've done for us. We stood up against Duke. No one? Yeah, for next year. And if the Fighting Camels go to the big dance again next year, they got to be hoping they don't draw Duke in the first round. Are more women than men? last night and going into the game with Iowa tomorrow the Blue Devils feeling pretty darn confident Jay Jennings with Duke and has more Duke got over the hump early against Campbell Mike Mocknick and the Campbells never ever gave up but the Devils are just too big too fast and too good if we lose in the tournament, it, will be, it won't be because we've overlooked anybody. Or, and it, it means that someone played a little bit better than we did. But uh, our guys love to play. And, and now they're in a tournament where uh, a lot's at stake. And so I think they'll even play harder. I think we're going to maintain a, an effort that's going to be unbelievable. You know, uh, we're not pacing ourselves. We're not trying to rest. We're not looking for the next game. We're, we're taking it one game at a time. And we have five more games to go. That's how we're looking at it. We have five more games to go. Can the Devils win five? more? Can they become the first team to win back-to-back -back national championships since UCLA? Stay tuned for the next exciting episode of March Madness. Duke versus Iowa on Saturday. In Greensboro, Jay Jennings, WRAL-TV5 Sports. Now what are